Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we're wondering whether the Great Wall will hold the Horde back as Mr. Yo playing as the Mongols in red gets ready to take on Hera playing as the Chinese in blue. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal as fast as possible, let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today. Now the Mongols, we saw them recently actually played by Hera against Mr. Yo are an incredibly fast cavalry-centric civilization. Their scout line units come with extra line of sight. Their cav archers fire faster. Their light cav, their hussars, their step lancers all come with extra HP. And their unique unit, the Mangadai, is a fast-firing, quick cavalry archer with an attack bonus against siege units. Now, to keep up with this very fast army on the field of battle, Mongol siege can actually be upgraded to move 50% faster. I hope we get to see that. I hope we all get to enjoy the bumper car nature of Mongol Siege when it is upgraded to move 50% faster. Now, to help support their military endeavors out on the map, Mongols hunt, Mongol Hunters do work 40% faster, and their houses can actually be upgraded so they don't lose population space if they get destroyed. Now, opposing Mr. Yo, we've got Hera playing as the Chinese in blue, a well-rounded civilization whose strong economic bonuses and very diverse tech tree mean a player has a lot of options and how he can crush his or her enemies. I guess he or she could crush his or her enemies. <laughs> to start with, all technologies get progressively cheaper, starting in feudal, all the way up to 15% cheaper in imperial. Chinese farms also seed with 10% more food. Their town centers support 10 population space, which is why you see one house instead of the usual two in the opening stages of the game. And you do hit the ground running with three extra villagers right from the start of the game, but 200 less food and 50 less wood. Now, to help defend your economy against raids, Chinese town centers come with a massive plus five extra line of sight. Take a look at that line of sight. So you can see your enemy coming from a mile away, garrison your villagers and get ready to hold down the fort. And your walls and towers can be upgraded to get 30% more HP, making them a little bit more tanky against enemy assaults. Now, on the field of battle, the Chinese can field all top of the line infantry. Although without the supplies upgrade, get ready to pay a little bit more for your champions, and their foot archers and skirmishers are also quite strong, especially if you mix in their unique unit, the Chukanu. This is a foot archer that fires multiple arrows and can be upgraded to get an even bigger attack. And while their cavalry is good, it really is the Chinese siege that can be a pain in the ass to deal with, since their scorpions can be upgraded to get a nice plus for attack. So these are the two sieves we are watching today while the players continue expanding their settlements. 15 villagers apiece, one scout each, taking deer, taking sheep anywhere and everywhere they can. Here we go. Mr. Yo has discovered we saw a little bit of trouble with uh, sheep scouting the last time we saw Mr. Yo play against Hera a few days ago. This time he manages, it looks like, to get all of the sheep and all of the deer in the immediate surrounding further away. There is another cluster, but... Guarded by a wolf, so Mysterio doesn't really want to risk it at this time. I am, of course, just kidding. So all the players, I was going to say again, sit on the same number of villagers, but no, our Mongol is already heading up to feudal. Hera going up to, looks like, 21 villagers for the moment. Let's take a look at the bases. I like Mysterio's base. Got a, has a nice big forest in the kind of forward position. Kind of uh, middle position, primary gold, nice and secure in the back, primary stone exposed to the front, but new, not too far away from the town center and not too far away from the primary gold is the secondary gold also in the backwards position. And same goes for the secondary stone as well. Forward base, bit of a long wall off, but we've never seen Mr. Yo deterred by that. The sides are a little bit easier to wall off for him. Hera, primary gold, I would call this the forward-ish position. So not great, not terrible. Where is his stone? In the back. And he also has not one big forest, but two small forests to the north and the south. That might make the forward wall off a little bit easier, especially if he decides to use this gold as part of it. However, secondary stone a little bit weirdly placed here on the other side of this forest, as well as the secondary stone did I say gold? Stone or gold? Anyway, secondary stone, secondary gold. Both Tetris pieces are off campus and very far off campus. So we'll see how Herod decides to wall this off, if at all. We know Mysterio loves 
to undertake big construction projects. He hit feudal about a minute or so ahead of his opponent and already is getting a stable. Remember, Mongol uh, cavalry units, they're light cav. If he does, uh, if we, I, I was taking a look there, distracting myself, looking at the top left of our screen to see if he's getting the light cav upgrade. They do come with 30% more HP. Makes them a lot tankier at, in the later stages of the game, but... Sorry, what am I talking about? The uh, we're, we're in feudal. <laughs> For some reason, my brain registered that we're in castle age. No, we are not. That is just the high level of casting. But here we go. Both players walling themselves in. Our Chinese walling the side of his base. Our Mongol. Okay, here we go. I was going to say focus so much on the front. I guess this is also technically the front of his base. Does he have a secondary structure for going up to castle? No, he does not, but he is pumping out scouts. Now, just like the Turks, the uh, good strategy for the Mongols is to keep these guys alive as long as possible. So if you do eventually upgrade them to light cav in castle age, uh, you, you know, they automatically come with 30% HP, 30% extra HP. The Turks, the same kind of philosophy, keep them alive as long as you can, especially into Castle Age, because then they automatically become Light Cav. You don't have to pay for that upgrade, but 30% more if he does. He's got four out. I'm surprised he didn't go this way, although maybe not surprised. He's already explored this way. There was one juicy villager here before the Spearman showed up, was ripe for the taking, and now the Scout will see the Spearman, will see the villager as well, building the house, and will he move back? One Scout already has half of its HP. And Hera here, just circling around the map. Oh, <laughs> tried to wall these scouts in. Instead, ended up losing the villager and I believe the stone as well. I don't think he canceled that uh, gate, Hera. I think he lost the stone, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, so a bit of a sour start here for Hera, who now is down two kills to zero, one of which is a villager. And Mr. Yo, using that Chinese cavalry that I said was good. Not not the best, good. Upgrades, of course. Uh, I've always been reminded. I think uh, Edelweiss, you reminded me that the uh, technologies, the upgrades are cheaper, which does make them above normal. Better than average, I think, is uh, the expression I'm looking for. But here we go. Four of them are engaging into a spearman. The spearman, will he get lucky? Oh, almost one poke away. The villager, though, gets the job done, gets the first kill here for Hera. But then she ultimately pays the price. Hera's scouts are moving in as well. Mysterio disengages. I wonder why. I know you've got one scout with very shitty HP, but the other two are full HP, I believe. Yeah, they are. I think Mysterio could have easily uh, taken that fight. But in any event, I guess he's more interested in scouting around the map. His map vision is good. He's seen the direction of attack, but the edges of the map are uh, Terra Incognita for him. Speaking of Terra Incognita, look at Hera's vision. Holy moly. This is not great vision for our Chinese, but does he care? He is turtling up. He is in uh, defense mode based on the way he's constructing these barriers. Mr. Yo doesn't care about barriers. His scouts are in. We'll see how long they're in for. The weaker one gets targeted immediately. Hera is now chasing four on three. Although, who's kidding who? It's more like four on two in a bit. They cannot escape from the east. They cannot escape from the west. So these scouts are basically trapped in here. We'll see if Mr. Yo micros them. We'll see what he does. Or if he just uh, ends up losing them. Hera moves to cut him off. Brilliant move there by our Chinese. Manages to get another scout, but one lies dead of his own. <laughs> Mr. Yo is being so annoying. You know these units are going to die. You know that their usefulness is basically uh, done. And so what does he do? He pokes and prods away at a villager while four scouts chase him. Hoping, uh, maybe thinking that this villager was going to die, but with 9 HP. Remember with Loom, they do get plus one melee armor against the unit that does what? Five? So still three prods needed to kill this unit. No high ground there at all. And now Hera. Finally, at the 16-minute mark of the game, is free to start scouting his opponent's base. Unfortunately for him, walled off to the north, walled off in the forward position, and very much walled off to the side. 
Mr. Yo heading up to Castle Age off the back of 35 villagers. Hera, 37 villagers, has the resources and clicks up as well, but a full minute behind his opponent. As always, I am very curious to know what the player who advances first does with the time advantage they have. Spearman going after Spearman, not exactly the juiciest target. I think the one to the north did manage to get a poke off at a uh, scout, and Hera peels off two to go south, two to go north. Now he's going to try to pull his opponent apart as this one Spearman engages from the low ground. So he is going to die unless Hera micros him away. But Hera doesn't seem very interested in that one Spearman. Exploring the map. Let's take a look at his vision now. Okay, so it's getting much, much better. And he spread these units out significantly. So the line of sight is going to help him out. He is discovering huge amounts of the map. What's Mr. Yo's vision like now? Oh, look at that. Significantly improved. Not a lot of dark spaces left here for our Mongol to explore. Hera still has a, a bit of work to do in that department. And immediately, let's see what he does. Step Lancers! We're going to get to see Mongol Step Lancers. You got to love them. Remember, they also come with 30% more HP. Let's see this guy pop out. There he is. 98 HP. The base, I think, of 60 plus another 18 plus another 20 for Bloodlines gives him 98 HP. The two surviving spearmen that took down their, uh, what do we want to call it, the brother from another mother over here in blue, who uh, I guess whatever this is, the helmet is left, which kind of makes sense. Both players immediately in castle plop down additional town centers. Our Chinese plopping down a third as well. Spearmen poking in through the west. Step Lancers, are they about to reveal themselves? Let's see. Yes, they do. And they start poking to the northeast. At the same time, more Step Lancers are kind of just gathering around here. Will Hera see the reinforcing? Yes, he does. And now <laughs> Mongols getting husbandry as well. So their speed is going to be significantly improved at the same time as he plops down his own third town center. 1.45. Let's take a look. 1.6 to the 1.5 of these Chinese scouts. House securing the base to the west. I think I said east. I meant west. You guys know. I swear I know my directions. Step Lancers poking and prodding. Hero loses one. Will he lose a second? Technically, these Step Lancers should be able to catch up. And they can attack one behind the other, but when they're in single file like this... Hera just keeping his opponent running around, wasting four army supply instead of poking away at the uh, border of the Chinese territory. So I think Hera is just happy to right click a bunch of spots all over the map to make sure that these guys run around. And here he comes with those Chinese camels. Plus one attack upgrade on them. Let's see them take on these Step Lancers. Will Mr. Yo notice? He does not. One ca one cavalry unit dies immediately. The second, oh man, how fast they die. What's the, uh, what is it, plus nine, right? Yeah, plus nine against cavalry. Oh man. Which means, I guess, two extra pokes and prods needed, right? To take these guys down because of their 30%, their extra uh, 18 HP. Era healing up his army with two monks. Has two extra villagers, two extra army count. So he is four total supply ahead. The score, though, says otherwise. Mr. Yo, just under 10% ahead of his opponent, has 11 kills to seven and isn't done with the Step Lancers. They are now plus one attack as well. This is the moment he's investing in farms. Will he lose a camel? Chinese camel stays Chinese, stays blue. Dabudi dabudai. No conversion for them just yet. Man, oh man, can they run the hell away from monks? And there is nothing the monks can do to catch up. And look at the mobility of the step land, uh, the uh, scout become a light cav. And now husbandry for uh, Hera as well. Once this finishes, I think these uh, light cav are going to be able to run the hell away from these step lancers very quickly. But even with this big body of six, I mean, I think it was five at the time. I think the sixth just joined. The light cab, the scouts, man, oh man, can they maneuver around units. I mention this every time we watch an arena game. When we enter phase two, when uh, players start fighting over relics, a fourth town center 
you can surround your monks with as many scout cav as you want. If there is a gap, your opponent will find it, and your opponent will use that gap to absolutely wreck your monks. Army counts almost identical, villager counts almost identical, players have disengaged. Let's take a look at their infrastructure when they've done so. Two stables now, three relics for Mysterio, one relic it looks like for Hera. Hera's base, one stable only. And that's basically it from the advanced. I mean, they both, uh, of course, have the barracks. They need those prerequisite structures. And Mr. Yo is going to keep an eye on his opponent. Oh, will he catch the monkey? He goes straight for it. One, two, and a third. And the monk lies dead on the field of battle. And <laughs> oh, that one range makes it look like they uh, they killed him from a distance, which they did. And now look at this, Mr. Yo guarding the relic against monks. Oh, man. Monks, beware. There are scouts uh, for the Chinese, the Mongols, rather, as well. Two more monks die. Oh, my goodness. We Are we watching an arena game? Okay, he sees the camel. He knows he has to back away. This camel means business. He is absolutely going to destroy this scout cavalry unit with zero melee armor. And the players yet again disengage. But whether or not Mr. Rel uh, Mr. Relic, oh my goodness, Mr. Yo gets this Relic, doesn't really matter. He's ahead in the Relic game anyway. A bit of a third wall off going up here. I didn't even notice the Blacksmith the first time I looked at it. It just blended into the houses so well. Now he's getting a whole bunch of stone. 13 villagers. Hera at 603 stone himself. And oh no, this is what happens in the later stages of the game when you have so many villagers you don't micro each individual one like in the early parts of the game especially when forests port form part of forward wall offs and the Ahera immediately plugs it up with a palisade of all things not not a stone wall interesting okay so hoping that 250 hp of wood is going to with uh basically deter his opponent <laughs> we'll see if that actually happens especially since there's a gap over here as well but yeah, when you get into the 80 villager mark, it's very hard while, you know, dodging Mr. Yo's attacks to micro each individual lumberjack to make sure that they do not create gaps in the in your wall off castle for our Mongol King of the Hill castle over here. Think he's going to kill a wolf? We will wait and see. Two red camels lie dead. I believe they were converted camels. There should be a conversion count. I wonder if that's just too complicated of a, of a metric. Yeah, <laughs> what did I tell you? What did I tell you? I knew it. Oh, man, a market going up. I, I didn't realize he didn't have a market. Two and a half minutes away from Imperial is our Mongol. Our Chinese nowhere close. Hera is doubling down on camel riders right now. What are their upgrades? Plus one, plus one. Maybe they weren't converts. Probably one was a convert in that battle I mentioned a second ago. Mr. Yo retreating slowly, slowly, step by step. We know exactly where he wants to lead Hera. And now Hera falls for it. He goes in the camels with their shitty zero pierce armor. Or shitty zero base pierce armor. Enter into the castle kill zone and we'll see how much damage this castle gets done towards the end. Does manage to get one kill. No? Why does it say zero? I thought he killed that camel, although maybe the Step Lancers got him. They do have 10 kills. Very close. Second castle, but oh, 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 our Chinese, he wants this gold, and more importantly, he wants Mr. Yoda not get that gold. So Hera, the one with the very forward gold positions, is exploiting Mr. Yo's only forward gold and creating... A bit of a gold crunch for our Mongol who needs gold. This is not a sieve like the Byzantines. The Mongols need a lot of gold. And Hera also now two and a half minutes away from hitting Imperial. Two and a half minutes behind his opponent who in six, five, four, three, two, one. Boom. How long do you think it'll take him to put a treb up? There it is. <laughs> the train a treb immediately. And from this castle... Yeah, he's got the wood. He's got the gold. There we go. Another monk is going to get sniped. Oh, right before he enters the castle and Hera reveals his hand here, showing all the camels as they pop out of the castle. So Mr. Yo knows 
he is going up against a huge camel force. 35 camels, iron casting as well. Another castle. Mysterio is creating a bit of a uh, cup, a bit of a parabola. No, not a parabola. Yeah, no, the right angle, the right side of a parabola here in castles. And by the way, amazingly placed castles, all three of them. Maybe this one on this hill, but right behind, but neither here nor there. Uh, we'll see if this castle goes up. Bracer extends the range of that castle. Those camels probably have a thing or two to say about those villagers. They get only one, and this is always speaks to my point about camels. By the way, did the camels see the... Uh, I don't know. I, I think they saw the villagers here. This speaks to my point about camels. Man, oh man, are they a purpose-built unit taking down cavalry? Except if you have civs that have features and bonuses. <laughs> oh, sour. Sour loss of a castle for Hera. Like the Hindustanis that attack faster, the uh, Gurjaras that get extra bonus damage. But just your basic camels? They suck at taking down villagers. They suck at taking down buildings. But... Mr. Yo is going cavalry uh well actually let's take a look four step lancers and one light cab the rest it kind of looks like he's trying to go uh transition into mangadai going up to 14 of them now we know why he built three castles i thought it was for more of a defensive posturing little did i know he's actually interested in going up to 17 parthian tactics as well so we're gonna see a mangadai transition from mr yo Always a big question mark whether Mr. Yo will go meme build, you know? Will he build one type of unit and one type of unit alone? And I guess the answer in this game is absolutely he will. And that unit will be the Mangadai. 1.54 movement speed. So the camels can outdistance them. But again, shitty pierce armor on the camels. Let's take a look. Yeah, fully upgraded. 12 attack. No real bonuses to speak of. Just the usual siege, and now that he got Parthian tactics also against Spearman line units. Oh, that is sour for Mr. Yo. Loses his forward trebs, but that's what you get when you leave them undefended against a fast-moving swarm of camels. And he sends one exploratory camel. This is a suicide mission for this guy. And Hera's not falling for it. He is not sending 30 army supply to chase one army supply. Although, uh, he did send... <laughs> he did send seven... Defensive castle going up for him as well. Mr. Yo continuing to poke around the map with units. A very defensive castle for Mr. Yo. Uh, okay. So producing Mangadai out of three castles is not enough for him. He needs four castles. He needs more castles. He needs more stone. Nine villagers on stone. Mangadai, let's take a look at them. Look like they are fully upgraded. And now Mysterio feels comfortable. It's time for the economic upgrades. And Hera moves in. His camels are heavies. They're upgraded, fully upgraded. 140 HP. If these were Saracen camels with 170, they'd be pretty damn tanky. But 140 HP is not bad at all. The problem is that I think they attack on a three, a two second delay. These guys 1.4. Oh my God. Look at how many camels are dead here. But will Mr. Yo lose his castle? More importantly, will he lose his trebs? And this is what I'm talking about. Man, oh man, are camels shit <laughs> against a lot of units that are not cavalry. We'll lose the one treb. Eventually, numbers do play out in Hera's favor. And the second treb should die as well, even though it's being repaired by a good number of villagers who now also died. And Mr. Yo's central, central castle has been demolished at the same time though he is pushing and poking into the center of Hera's base Hera's camels are here to defend should do a pretty good job of this two against four five light cav I give this to the camels this this is what they're good at this is why you build them look at how incredibly outnumbered they were and how amazingly strong they were this guy survives with two HP but against Trebs <laughs> Mr. Yo returning the favor Says, I lost two of my trebs, so I'm going to take two of yours. We'll get one, but then the force here, the expeditionary force, dies. 49 army count to 30, 120 villagers to 115. Hera needs to increase camel production, and that is exactly what he's doing. Eight camels going up to almost 30. Players have disengaged. Where, oh, where are these 34 Mangadai? They're in the back, and look 
how bruised and damaged they are if Hera can just close the gap and get face to face with these guys his camels might actually absolutely wreck them they're in the castle they are healing up their HP is only down 450 these Mangadai down about 600 HP and now oh man oh man nomads I think this might be the first time in the in the history of my channel I've seen anyone research nomads Oh my goodness, remember I said the Mongol houses themselves can be upgraded? <laughs> so they don't lose population space? Man, oh man. I mean, it's not an expensive upgrade, but we, I don't think I've ever seen it actually researched. Oh no, Mangadai on the high ground. That 12 attack becomes an 18. Or sorry, no, I, oh my goodness, I have Tatars in my brain. That 12 attack becomes a 15. And they are just laying waste to Hera's camel population. Holy moly, is the castle going to survive? Yes, it is on the high ground. But man, do the Mangadai take a lot of camels with them. Oh man, uh, Hera's camels are having a very difficult time finding purchase against these Mangadai. 17 Mangadai left, 29 camels on the menu for our Chinese and now okay the positioning of them is fantastic he closed the gap but too few too few Mr. Yo trying to return the favor one treb down these two are shelling away at their counterpart and it dies as well so now Mr. Yo says you know what I know you can't attack my castle anymore I'm just going to reallocate these villagers get your butts back to stone doesn't he have already two mining camps here why is he building a third? <laughs> okay, maybe maybe in the heat of the battle, we'll take a look at his APM at the end of the game. Maybe in the heat of the conflict, he didn't realize that he already had two mining camps here. Five villagers on stone. So basically one, two, three are the only castles we're going to see out of our Mongol for a while. And now he's building siege. And siege engineers. Is there going to be a transition here? Uh, does he really need it? He's got the Hussar meat shield. He's got 23 Mangadais. And now this is probably the most annoying part of the game for Hera, where he now has to start dodging Hussar raids and not your average... This is not your grandmother's Hussar. This is a Hussar with 180 HP, and the Chinese cannot respond in kind. They cap out at a light cab, and Mr. Yo goes immediately for the resources the same time he is shelling away at this castle. Two horses behind here. Uh, pretty calm horses. Pretty uh, nonchalant about uh, the wanton destruction going on around them. The Hussars. Hussars, hello. You're leaving behind a nice colony of villagers you can kill. Camels cleaning things up to the west. Camels cleaning up things to the center. But what that means is Hera's army in the main portion of the battle is tiny. 23 camels. 35 Mangadai. Is that enough to one-shot this camel, by the way? Four pierce armor against uh, 12 attacks. So eight damage. 140 is what? 30... 33? Yeah, it's enough to one-shot a camel. Oh, man. This is a, a disaster for Hera. Why didn't he bring back the rest of his units? And he is moving forward very cockily with his uh, trebuchets. Two of them will die immediately. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what can you do here? I think Hera engaged just a fraction of a minute too early. Left behind, it looks like a few of his camels. Okay, so he brought back the ones that were saving the base over here in the center. But, I mean, let's take a look at real quick at that attack because I feel like he... So Mr. Yo's, I mean, he's got 37 Mangadai here. You're attacking into that with 11 camels initially. And then there's another body of 10 behind. So the Hera has the numbers, and then he's got 21. So that's 42 camels. But they are not all attacking at once. Forget your trebs. Get rid of the Mangadai. So Hera here, I don't know if it's uh, indecision or if it's uh, a part of the strategy that he wanted to save the trebuchets above anything else. 
but he engaged in three different waves against these Mangadai. First 11 camels, then 10 camels, and now finally the uh, reserves have been called in, and it is 14 of the 21 left, and Mr. Yo must have been loving it. 51 kills, not a single villager kill here, although he has 40 villager kills to 20, and... Interesting, The uh, it's almost the 20 villager difference is the total kill count difference, but holy moly, what a fun game. <laughs> Heavy Camel Rider decked out, fully upgraded against fully upgraded Elite Mangadai. Mr. Yo's APM, Hera's APM, lower than I thought it would be for both players. Mr. Yo's at the beginning of the game, Hera right at the end. Economically, yeah, our uh, Mongol is ahead, but not by that much. I think this is less than 10%. Trash resources, he's ahead. Our Chinese ahead in gold and stone, although stone not that much. Relic count, the difference only about a 1,000. And I love the versatility of our Mongol here, first starting the game out with some cavalry units, and then the second Hera popped out these camels, these awesome camel units with their big juicy scimitars. He just transitioned to Mangadai. And Hera doubled down on ca camels, but I think just took a really bad engage here. His villager count is not terrible. He withstood the damage here. He's got a good amount of wood, which will sustain these farms, which will give him food. The question is, where is his gold? I don't think he's got any gold left, which might signal to us why he decided to GG at this point in the game. I mean, obviously, we know why he GG'd, because he just lost way too many camels here at the front lines. But no more gold left for him means that, uh, yeah, he can't replenish his army. He's not. Let's take a look one second, a split second before the game ended. He was training two camels out of how many stables? Nine stables. I mean, of course, nine stables. <laughs> this is Arrow we're talking about. But Mr. Yo with the three castles, the Mangadai, and the raids that pulled his opponent left, center, and... Very soon to the right. I feel like these guys, zero kills. We're just kind of hanging out here. There's a juicy wood line to your right. There's a juicy wood line just south of you. Several juicy wood lines would have just caused way too much damage. And by the way, Hera knows that these guys are roaming around the map somewhere. He saw them. Mr. Yo made no attempt to hide these guys. They went right through this farming colony. And Hera sees all and knows that they're lurking somewhere in the back. So keep in mind, knowing that he lost this battle... And knowing that there's a body of at least 10 Hussars somewhere in the back of his base, it is no surprise why Hera decides to GG. Mr. Yo gets the victory with these impressive Mangadai uh, on the high ground, it looks like, for the most part. Which could explain why the camels died super duper fast. But in any event, Mr. Yo is victorious, takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.